Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. So we're continuing our combined arm series of driving vehicles about and today we're going to look at the SA8 OSA. It's a funny looking thing. I always think it looks like a bit like a duck. Um, and what we've got is a low altitude, relatively low range SAM system. It's a radar guided SAM system. What we've got here is the uh, early warning or and the search antenna here it kind of erects itself and spins around now notice how you get kind of two antennas you've got this antenna here and this here um I, I i may well be wrong but i think this one here may be kind of pitched back and allow it to search up more than this antenna can um it remains to be uh, seen if that's correct but that's how i think that works you've got the launcher here obviously carries six missiles that will go through shortly uh, it can as well as radar search as radar track and i'm pretty sure that this uh, complex here this assembly here is going to be the radar track so uh, where this antenna spins around this one is going to be driven around by the turret and will track the azimuth of the target and possibly the elevation of the target as well uh, now in real life i believe the osa also can fire on targets uh, and by optically guiding the missiles and you got this little this little friend here which i believe is kind of a, a glorified uh, 60s video camera or, or something along those lines and that can optically lock onto things so it doesn't have to fire with its radar so if it wanted to fire silently it could now in dcs i'm 99 percent sure that it cannot fire optically and when you control it as a human as we'll see in a minute you can't fire it optically there you have to use the radar so i stand to be corrected as ever but i'm pretty sure essentially this is radar guided only in DCS, uh, so that's that. Let's run through its credentials. It's a 9A33. OSA is the NATO call sign and SA8. Minimum altitude 100 meters here. However, in testing, we found a minimum altitude of 50 feet up to a maximum altitude of 21,000 feet. The type, a low altitude SAM uh, crew of five. We've got its dimensions there. Total weight, seven and a half metric tons. Ground, cl ground clearance, 0.4 meters. Launch weight, 126 kilos. Presumably that's the missile. It's got a 200 horsepower diesel engine. It can go up to 80 kilometers, about 50 miles an hour. Max water speed. Well, I didn't know it was water, but eight kilometers an hour, apparently. That's awesome. Operational range, 500 kilometers on the road and reload time of 10 minutes. It carries six times SA-8, nine Mike 33 missiles. In addition to that, uh, we believe it has up to the ability to track targets up to 16 nautical miles away and has an acquisition time of between 20 and 26 seconds. So let's jump in the mission and have a go. I'm going to go in tactical commander on the blue side. I'm going to click on our guy there. I'm going to click on the tank sign and in we go. So first of all, controls. Of all of these combined arms tutorials that we're going to do, we're going to assume the default controls as they're set. So I'm not going to change anything. So that means my controls by default be the same as your controls. All combined arms vehicles have the same set of controls. So that's really good and easy. So there's about 100 controls. Let's go through the main ones that I'm interested in. So to accelerate the vehicle, if we want to move the vehicle, accelerate, brake, turn left, turn right. And we need to do gear shifts with that. It's in neutral by standard. You can gear up. That'll put it into positive gears. And if we want to reverse, we've got Z. We've got controls here for turret down, turret up and whatnot. But all I do is use the default, which is just using the mouse to move around. So if I go OK here, then you can see all I'm doing is moving the mouse to move the, uh, uh, the guy here. Uh, to move the turret, if you like, about whether this thing actually has a turret. Whoops. I'm not actually sure. It does look. It does have a turret. That's pretty cool. So that's what I'm moving about. I wouldn't suggest uh, moving it to your joystick unless you really want to. It's usually best just to um, leave everything on the basic setup, I find. But it's up to you guys. Okay, back to controls. So to lock onto a target is going to be the enter button. And to get rid of the lock, that lock, we're going to have the backspace button. To fire the active weapon, we're going to... Uh, I'm going to have to find that here. Fire selected weapon with the mouse. It's going to be mouse one. You can put that on your joystick as well, but I just use the mouse for everything. To fire a secondary weapon, like guns or whatever, then left shift plus mouse. To zoom in, we've got separate zoom in commands, but just to make it easy, I've got here press and hold zoom narrow, which gives us this kind of this kind of thing. Sorry for the noise. There, that's right, mouse button, press and hold. We're currently being um, shot by flankers, so that's who we're going to be beating today. And there's a whole bunch of other buttons here that are going to be useful, but I'm just going through the basics today. So let's look at the views. 
So this is our basic main view, our F1. If we press the F1 button, this is what we come to. If we press F2, it'll lock onto a plane and follow a plane. If we press F7, then we get to this outside view where the mouse will now move the camera around. If we press F1 and then press insert, then we can have this view where we are outside but we can still drive the vehicle, we can still drive the turret up and down with the mouse. So we can happily drive the vehicle, physically drive the vehicle and aim it like this. So if I were to unpause, put it in a gear, move forward. Like that. So those are our different views. Now let's look at our display. Can I get my cursor up? Yes, I can. Right, so we've got up here, this is our top-down scope radar display. Here is our B-sweep beam here. So that is where the actual radar uh, is scanning. And it's going to spin round. And if you look at the uh, the scope here, if I unpause, you can see... Oh, sorry, that's the B-sweep there. It's in time with this guy here. And you can see targets being seen here on the scope. It's currently set to 30 kilometers and we can change that. We have controls in that control list to change that. Got our AI information down here, our formation column, our ROE hold, which is how I put it from the mission editor. Uh, we've got just details down here. We've got our azimuth, our speed, our gear currently in drive and our ammo 6x9 Mike 33s. We've also got a compass here, turret position here and current condition of our vehicle in terms of health points or whatever you want to call it as well as our heading tape up here. This cursor here is essentially our point of interest, where we're aiming our sensor, if you like. I'm going to go drive it from the cockpit. So I press insert and we go inside again. Next, if we press right control and F10. In fact, let me just show you that there. So then we've got our plan position indicator and we can drive, we can operate the vehicle from there if we don't want to use... Uh, let me do that. I'm just going to pause that there. So if we want to use this, this is, I guess, kind of simulating uh, being inside the vehicle and not being able to see out per se. So we've got our B-sweep running around here, and that's going to pick up the targets, as you can see. And all it's going to give you is the target and their velocity. It's not going to give you um, altitude or anything like that, because this is search only. We have to lock onto them to get our target information here. Also, we've got controls here. We've got the range scale, which we can change here with these guys. We've got our radar, which we can turn off and on here, whether we want to emit. Um, so if we were being attacked by targets that could shoot us down, then we would press emission, and that would turn our radar off, and that would stop them being able to seed us based on our radar emission. We can fire the missiles. We can lock and fire the missiles if we like from here. Um, we can fire the button there, and once we've got the lock, um, this will glow, and once it's in range, this will glow. Uh, so I think I'll shoot one of these guys from the cockpit first of all, and then we'll come here and um, shoot one from here. But let's just to show how to lock. We can just left click on one of these guys, that one there. Assuming he doesn't go out of radar contact. And you can see our, um, our that line there, which is, that is the, you know, the main front dish there. In fact, looking at it, that does look like an optical tracker, doesn't it? So maybe they're right, maybe it is optical. But it's turned this forward-facing thing here to the target to actually get the track. And you can see it actually tracking the target like that. You can see it moving ever so slightly. So if we go back to here, uh, now we've got the target's information. So as long as we don't lose a track on him, we've got the, the target speed, the target's altitude, target's distance so I think he's out of range at the moment he's no he's in is it within range uh, we've got the azimuth of the target time to hit of the missile and um, our ammunition here you can see that we've waited the necessary time it takes to get the lock and it's now got a positive lock and it's now in range so what we can do is actually we'll fire from here first of all we'll see if we can get a hit uh, so let's go let's fire that And it's missed for whatever reason. He's he's either notched it or he put his gear down. You may have just confused it, uh, or maybe it was slightly out of range. Either way, we've missed there, but that's fine. Let's go back to our scope view. That is, uh, what is it? Right control F10. So you can actually see our own missile there. Okay, so that was showing how to uh, uh, track this guy. Let's track this guy now. Click on him there. See the main dish is turning and is now tracking this guy here. And we've got information, his speed, his altitude, his distance. This guy is very close. Uh, this time let's shoot a missile from uh, inside the cabin. So I'm going to unpause, going to press F1. 
There he is. And you can see currently we're acquiring a lock and he's going to pass over us, unfortunately, now. So we're going to have to reinitiate a lock. So what we're going to do is move our mouse cursor over him. We're going to press enter on him to set the track going. Pressed it. And if you look at the bottom now, you can see that's his distance in meters and we're acquiring uh, the target and it's currently going to take 20 seconds or so at his particular credentials. Once uh, we've achieved the lock, then we're going to uh, see the box go red around this guy and then we can fire and that's when we press left mouse button to fire. So hopefully he's not going to come over us again. So you can see why at this point, when you're doing seed work with an aircraft, if you can kind of come over the top of a SAM really low, how it kind of screws their lock completely, and the weak points in uh, in a SAM, if you like. See, I'm not going to get a chance to get a missile off because he's come over so low, and we have a minimum minimum range of 0.8 miles. So we're going to have to wait for him to go over again. Hope that we've got a lock now, but we can't really fire. We never would have made that shot. Try again. Oh, we've got, we've retained a lock. That's beautiful. Right, well, I'm gonna fire my missile. I'm gonna add some lead. Always add a bit of lead and fire. He's going evasive. Boom, boom. That target is down, sir. And for fun, why don't we try and um, find the other guy? Let's see if we can find where he is. Uh, there he is. Track him. Okay, we've got him there auto track on at the moment you can see it's acquiring uh, we've auto track because we tracked him from the uh, the uh, right control and f10 view i'm going to fire when i'm ready to fire okay ready to fire i'm going to fire now and we've got boom boom Jolly good fun. Like I said, I'm not quite sure how to do the optical lock, if optical lock on this thing is possible. It may just be that it does it automatically and we don't get to differentiate between an auto lock and the radar lock. Uh, that bit's a bit beyond me. And to run the scenario again, but from the uh, tactical commander screen, so tactical commander, okay. So if we're going to drive him from here, we left click on him. Uh, we've got tiers formation if we want him in a formation if he's got but he's only in a, a single man group so it's going to be irrelevant but if we have multiple we can do our formation there uh, we can do his rules of engagement so at the moment he's on hold by standard so if i want him to fire then he's going to fire and he's going to start shooting down those su-27s pretty sharpish as soon as he's got a lock let me just speed that forward there we go missile out missile out get some can't hit him for some reason How about this guy here? Ha! <laughs> Good fun. State auto green or red, and we're going to leave that on auto. If we want to set him any restrictions, like what's the maximum range of his maximum range that you want him to fire at? So if you want to hold fire until we're 50% range, we can do that. If we want to cancel the emissions, we can do that. We engage air weapons, and we can apply those, these rules to the entire group. And um, if we want to set a path, set path here. And let's say we want to go left click there, left click there, left click there, then left click there, and then right click on this last one to form the route. Set him off, set his speed, put him at the maximum speed, speed that forward, and off he goes. And he's completed his task. That's that. I hope that was useful, and see you later.